Well, this is funny. Uh, my name is Juliana Castro. I originally from Colombia, but I live in the US, so I'm gonna be referring to some copyright stuff that is mainly kind of within the US copyright system. Um, I do speak Spanish though, so some people have asked if I'm from here, I'm not. Um, uh, I'm rotating some books, some of them do have text, some others are not ready, but they will be. Um, and I just print some mock-ups for an exhibition that I had um, in Austin, Texas a couple weeks ago. I, I arrived to like Libre and open source stuff through publishing. Um, I work mainly for museums and I was trying to push museums to put their collections, especially their public domain content, um, online or to put their like educational kind of institutionally created content for free on their Creative Commons licenses. So working for museums and I kind of arrived to a sort of like accessibility advocacy and then I arrived to what we all do. So my background is in graphic design but I have a big background of very like commercial software and I'm, I'm using like I'm using a lot of creative software that is not um, open source so I'm very open to kind of joining from all the things that have happened um, during um, LGM because I like I played with a couple stuff I'm pretty lazy so um, I'm excited to see more stuff so that's kind of a little bit about what I do. Um, this is funny, I'm gonna move this so that I don't, okay, that's it. Um, I recently created Cita, which is the publisher of the books you're seeing and of some digital books that we're gonna see in a little second. But before that, I kind of need to give a, a context on why is it that I end up doing feminist books um, and why is it that I do think it's, it's important? First of all, the copyright has been pushed, especially in the US, especially since the 20s, since uh, Disney decided to do what Disney decided to do, so no one can do to Disney what Disney did to everybody. Um, and uh, that kind of had some consequences on, like, well, this is, this is kind of a boring timeline, but pretty much since the 1910s uh, and 1920s, the time of the creative, creative stuff that has been put online or whatever has been extended and extended and extended. And in particular in the US, um, there is one example and is when I was trying to publish books. Um, I wanted to publish a Virginia Woolf's uh, Room for One Zone that is in public domain anywhere except in the US because of how the copyright system works. So while I'm based in the US, I cannot publish it, but I could anywhere else. And that kind of like, as you may know, and kind of like with all the political background that open source entails, it has a lot of economic interests and ownership problems um, that end up harming the openness and the creativity, creativity of other people. And I kind of thinking about public domain stuff and accessibility to stuff and free speech, I concluded that, well, writing was a pretty cool tool for that. And decided to kind of stand between the three things I really care about in my practice as a designer and as, well, literature in general and art, uh, diversity and accessibility. So. I went and found some sad data that would like make easier to make a project that people would be interested in, especially in academia. If I don't have any context, to be like, I really want to do feminist books, but I have to explain why. And good bad thing, that's very very easy. There are just like very. I have a lot of data because my master thesis is in it, but I'm just gonna touch just the surface of how problematic this is. 
Um, I don't know if you're at all familiar with Goodreads. It's kind of like Goodreads, exactly as it says. It's a place in which people say, this is good to read, this is bad to read, and it's kind of a social media for readers. And they do have um, sort of archive of public domain content, mm, mostly review and not like an actual archive of the content. And within the 50 top books, um, there are only five female authors. And that is for many reasons included that, well, the things that are already on the public domain are before women were actually joining the writing circles. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a second. But it also happens to be a problem within open access for, for women. Only 5.0% of the contributors of GitHub are women. That means Kind of, if we all were to be GitHub contributors, all in this room, there would be probably two women in this whole room. That is like pretty low. So I decided to do something. I decided to pay literature that is on the public domain, that is a lot of literature, but in particular feminist literature that is, or like before they were called themselves feminists, they were just saying, we are kind of equal, like we are maybe less strong physically, but we can think too. Um, or women are pushed to write about silly stuff and that's not okay. And I just kind of collected all those texts and I wrote to scholars from the US mainly that write about these authors and I asked them to join and I asked them to write a Creative Commons based introduction for these books. And I did the same with um, designers. And I made books. I made, well, so far there are five, six, two of which, three, two of which are printed, three of which are online. Mm. And the model of CETA, and CETA, we can talk a little bit about that later, but CETA, for those who don't speak Spanish, when translated to English means a number of things. So CITA is both um, appointment, like you have an appointment with your doctor, but you can also have a CITA with a romantic person, so it's also a date. And it's also a quotation, like if you will quote from a book. More kind of cute are the fact that when you put CITA to the end of a word, for example, cerveza, you make it tiny. So, cita is the suffix to make feminine nouns be tinier, like cerveza, like mujer, and so on. Um, and so, what I did kind of with this was to situate existing public domain early feminist literature, and we can discuss later about the actual content. I have a lot of things to say about that, but we can talk about later. Uh, Creative Commons scholarship research scholarship and design that is existing living authors and living designers that are invited to participate and that say yes, at no cost. And I just have zero money to make CETA and everybody that I have invited, Harvard graduates, the designers from all over the world have said yes. Like I've, no one told me like this sucks, why are you doing this and not paying me? Like no one. Mm. And then I took some open source code from the internet, pretty much, the people that have said, like, just use this for whatever. Um, funds, some from Open Foundry, some from Google Fonts, um, and images that sometimes accompany this text in the, in the past, or icons, or like all sorts of stuff that are open source. And I built CETA. So that's. Watch the video. CETA is a feminist open source digital library that highlights, publishes, and promotes works by female authors. We provide free access to short books and essays which can be read online as a web page using an interactive online reader, viewed in book mode, or printed and bound as a booklet using easy to follow instructions. The publishing industry consists of many interlinking elements, including distributors, publishing houses, agents, and authors. The copyright of a book's content is usually held by the author, while the copyright of the edition is held by the publisher. 
When copyright expires, books enter the public domain, which is where plenty of classic literature can be found, like Jane Austen, Shakespeare, or Cervantes. However, these books are almost never available in an open access printed format, and publishers and distributors tend to keep most of the revenue. Sita's books use Creative Commons licenses as a way of giving free access to the content and expanding the reach of these books. Some of these writers adopted masculine pseudonyms or used their initials rather than their first names in order to be taken seriously in a male-dominated field. Some tackled progressive topics that others found shocking or even immoral. Many fell into obscurity after publication. Sita uses the power of the internet to make these important public domain texts available to all for free in a carefully designed, readable, contemporary format. Sita has also invited writers and scholars to write short introductions to each of these texts and commissioned artists to create new covers. You can now read and share Sita's books for free. In the future, we plan to republish new works, explore texts in Spanish, and invite contemporary authors to participate. Visit sitapress.org to learn more. So this is how the website looks like right now. Um, there are also funny gifs hidden. Like, there are, yeah. There are, where are the rest? There are many. Um, I think this is my favorite. Um, and the kind of the, the whole idea of it is to eventually, so no, let's just go to one of the books. Um, because no one has been paid, and it's not because I don't want to, it's just because I can't. Um, I'm, using a kind of a very straightforward uh, attribution kind of policy. So the names of the authors of any kind are in the cover of each book uh, and kind of repeated within the whole website many times. Um, there's also a credits page in which you can find where is it that I've taken from the icons that wink in the video to the voice of the video to the uh, JavaScript library that I use, that I'm going to show you in a sec. Um, so this is, for example, one um, essay written in 1892 that has suffered a number of changes uh, over the years, including uh, mainly in the existing online archives, like Project Gutenberg. They have changed sections from the originals, and those are things that I would never know but that I learned through inviting these scholars to write these introductions. So, like, they know way more than I do about this stuff, and they kind of have suggested certain things. Pretty much uh, what CETA does is it uses uh, a thing called binary that we can talk if we have time, um, that converts CSS and HTMLs into uh, printable books. Um, so what it does is it has some issues that I'm still figuring out. Like it has some like um, uh, bleeding options that um, sometimes are complicated to fit if you already have an image for the cover and it doesn't have bleeding because it's not designed for print. Um, but pretty much you can have like default paging, you can have booklet sheets so that like it goes like 132 on two, yeah, booklet sheets. Um, crop marks, uh, bleeding, then you can have like different sizes, mainly in inches. I'm sorry about that. Um, and that's pretty much it on the website. Um, there are ex like currently six books ongoing. Three of them are available online, two of which you have around. Uh, some others do not have an introduction yet, so that's why they're not ready. Um, and there are others apart from these that I'm working on having any time soon. Um, 
And that's, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much what this is. I don't want to kind of not say that I am more than open to, no, yes, to collaborating. If any of you is interested of doing any type of uh, volunteering from designing a cover to, um, to give it a, a font that is open source that you've made, you think is pretty great for this, um, to just cheering up, that helps. Or there is a GitHub page um, that uh, it's open, it's under an MIT license. Um, so yes, that's, that's pretty much it, thank you. I kind of went super fast because I thought I was off time. So, and I have no idea really what time it started, so I think we have time. Um, I'm happy to delve more into anything that you think I didn't speak enough about or that you will think it's more interesting. Um, I don't want to go a lot into the technical issue of, of binary that is this JavaScript library because I didn't make it um, and because it's pretty straightforward. So if you're interested in using that at all to making websites be printable objects, it's very easy. Again, it's in the credits page. Uh, yeah. So it's for Cita Press. GitHub available? Yes. yes. So what's the handle or the... It's, uh, oh, it's Cita. I don't know if there's anybody kind of working on library studies or library sciences, but the, the project actually started as a print project um, in which I would just make books, PDFs, that people could photocopy pretty cheaply in community libraries, especially, I live in Texas, uh, especially in Texas in the US. Um, and it, it, be, it became a total different thing when I was trying to just really push for the accessibility that online channels gives, give. Um, but uh, there is a big print component on like almost zine making. Mm. So if anybody is interested in hosting uh, a workshop, I am just, I have all these ready to print material um, that I'm not putting online because it's very confusing if you have never Make books if you have never if you don't know how booklets work it's very confusing but um, I'm working with some community librarians in Texas and in New York that are making these tiny workshops with some groups of people um, so hit me up too if you're interested at all just gonna go back to that slide because it's kind of cute I was wondering about printing, mm -hmm. actually, like, and I, you're speaking now about these workshops, but what's the reason to, like, how do you So, it, it depends, it depends. You have to know already something to use the binary thing to print. It comes with crops and it comes with, but you have to know how to, like, tell the, printer to flip the page and like all the sorts of stuff. Um, so that's why I also have these letter size content um, that is mainly thought for groups of people so that they can print one and photocopy. Um, yes. 
You can read it in your mobile phone, yeah. You could. I mean, you could read it online, you could print it, you could read it online as a book, or you could not read it at all. <laughs> there are many options. Yes? Hi, great talk, thank you. I think you're doing some really great stuff, and it's wonderful to see these, uh, you know, these essays and documents reprinted, and I thank you for bringing the books, I love them to see. I have one question about it, I think. Uh, and I just wonder whether you could get a bit more exposure. There's no imprint page in your book. Okay. Um, which is the page that has things like the ISBN and uh, the library catalog in mm -hmm. And if you had that, it might be easier for uh, libraries to be able to order a single copy they could then duplicate. So I wonder if you could consider that. Yes. Yes. Um, considering making those books available on print-on-demand options, um, it's, it's actually if you go to the page and you click it, it says coming soon. So it's there, it's not happening yet. Uh, but then I will also have to like buy an ISBN for each book and like, I mean, but I will have to anyway, like to do that. So there is like a colophon in the book in which you can like go to the rest of the content. But yeah, like ideally to catalog the books more extensively, it would be pretty cool to have more stuff. Um, again, the print books are slower in production. Um, but yeah. So it depends. I'm still playing around with what the 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 binary can do. There are some line, like there are some limitations for web always, and compared to print, that you cannot really control, like widows or rivers. Like all those things are just like very difficult. Um, and I'm again figuring it out. I'm a mainly print-based designer, so I've learned a lot. Um, but um, the, the design is pretty much, I'm going with fairly conventional rules of typography, like size base, I'm using a slightly bigger size for accessibility issues, but um, most of the stuff is like fairly conventional, like just like bleeding and yeah. Uh, I would be happy to, I mean, I don't feel entitled to edit certain texts that I don't know very well, that I like them as a reader, but I would be very happy to have invited editors to do the stuff, be like, and kind of justify it from a scholarship perspective. Why is it that is happening? Um, I, I like thinking that I've built a platform that people can do stuff with that I don't feel entitled to yet at least. But yeah, that would be pretty cool. This is funny, it feels funny. Like those that of you that have presented and then there is this silence in which you don't know if people are gonna ask something or not. I think, yes. Well, to be, to be more about it. And I think it's really nice to reactivate this content by designing it and bringing it in another light. But, so, what? And you're talking about these printing workshops? Um, what, are, what are your ambitions there? And, and what, are the what? Sorry? what are your ambitions there? I mean, I. Or your plans just started. Like, it literally went up two weeks ago. So I am, um, again, figuring it out. I am, um, my main kind of goal is for people to read the fucking books, like to read them and in whatever context they can, in whatever medium they have available. 
if more stuff can happen, if people are like, oh, I'm just, I want to write to you and I want to contribute or I want to, whatever, I'm, I'm very happy to do, that. like, in terms of ambitions, I would like to edit other languages. Uh, I would like to add a contemporary authors that publish books and essays on public domain or on Creative Commons licenses. But I don't know. Like that is already works like like a zine, it, just for economic issues because it's easier if it's letter size and you photocopy in a photocopier that is almost the same anywhere. Um, but it, I'm open if you have any suggestions. Okay, thank you. Thank you.